Welcome to Worship with the Lutheran Church of Our Savior. Welcome to our guests, our members, our family, our friends, our scouts, everyone who is here today uh, to worship both here in person as well as online. We are one church, the body of Christ, together. Today is the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. It's also Scout Sunday. Uh, annually. Did we do it last year? I was actually on sabbatical. Great. We do this air almost, almost every year unless there's a pandemic. We do this every year uh, in the spring, and uh, we have we have a multiplication of sc of scouts uh, that are here now uh, in our in our building, and that we sponsor. Uh, we have scout troops three three twenty and five three twenty, and Cub Scout Pack twenty eight, uh, and we are glad that you're here today. We honor you. Let us begin this worship with the confession and forgiveness. You'll find it on page two in your worship folder. You may sit stand or kneel. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sins. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. 
For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us together sing the gathering song, hymn number 825, You Servants of God. Continue on page two in the worship folder with the greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who hope in you. Because we are weak mortals, we accomplish nothing good without you. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do, and give us grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Except for the kids, but all the kids to come up to the front for our kids' time. Come on up. Oh, good to see you all here today. Old friends and new friends. Good to have you. And Tommy's here. Yay! So, oh, this is going to be interesting because you're going to know different things when I ask these questions. Did you know, kids who are members of this church, did you know that we're not here just on Sunday mornings? Do you know that there are people here every day in this church building? doing all kinds of different things. We have church members. There are people who sew and they make quilts to send all over the world to people who, who, uh, who uh, need to keep warm and they don't always have what they need. We have people who come and they take care of food and they take them to churches where there are people who are uh, in that neighborhood who don't have enough food. And we pack backpacks and we do all kinds of things. That, that choir, some of them are here, some of them are out there. They come every single Thursday night and they practice. Um, and then there are other things that are people who you don't see on Sunday mornings. There are, um, every Sunday afternoon, there are a bunch of older kids who come, and they, they are in the Dayton Philharmonic Strings Orchestra. They play violin, and they play cello, and they practice here. And let's see, and there's uh, music together, that's for who meets over there. And they come on Fridays, and they're really little kids, and they learn about music. And we have a preschool, of course. Top of the Hill Preschool is here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. There are people who come on Saturdays, Saturday mornings, uh, for 12-step groups. That's for people who, um, who have some difficulties in their life, some challenges in their life, and they come together to help each other to do that. And, and, we have scouts who come here, too. We have scouts who come here, too. We have... Two different troops of scouts, and we have Cub Scouts. What are you guys? Um, we're, I think, one. <laughs> Pat, what? What? One. one. Cub Scouts. Yes. Weeblos. Um, no? Excellent. And they come here, and all these groups come here because they're doing things that have to do with God, about helping people. Uh, I know that there's like 12 laws. I'm not going to make you say all the laws, but some of them are like being, there's, they sound very much like what we hear from God in the Bible and what Jesus says, like being helpful, right? That's one. Um, I was going to say being clean. About that. Did I just lose? Uh, being clean. But it's about keeping the world clean, right? Two. Uh, and, oh, I tried to memorize them. What are some other ones? Do you, can you think of any others? Helpful, help other people. That sounds like Jesus, right? What else? Stay healthy. Yep, that's good too. Uh, oh, be trustworthy. Is that one? Don't lie to people. There are all these things that scouts do that are just like what Jesus and God teach us too. So it really is good. And so today here they're our guests because they are part of this whole thing of the church. Because uh, and so we're they're like our special guests, and uh, we're glad to have them, and we thank God for them. <sighs> Did you know there's church here every single day? Yeah, Erica usually talk much louder than that. I didn't hear every word, but I heard enough to say you knew. Yeah. So God gives us this building to do all kinds of wonderful things. So let's have a prayer. Let's put our hands together, close our eyes, and repeat, a repeat after me. 
for this great building. This big building. A place where we can give a home. Where you give a home to so many wonderful things. Thank you. Amen. Okay, I think there's Sunshine Choir rehearsal today. Is that right? Uh, so, if you're going to sing in the choir, sing today. Uh, we, Mrs. Beale's going to invite everybody to go. Um, you can go learn a song or you can stay here. You can do anything you either what you want to do. You can stay with your scout. Okay? couple updates for the prayers before I go. Um, uh, Jackson, who we were praying for, has unfortunately passed this week. Um, he spent uh, two and a half weeks in intensive care, was one month old. So if you can please keep the um, Jackson's family in your prayers. And um, also my friend Jesse is having surgery tomorrow uh, for breast cancer. So if you could please keep her in your prayers, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, see you guys later. Welcome again to worship with the Lutheran Church of our Savior. Uh, there are announcements in the back of your worship folder. I invite you to please read through those. One I want to highlight especially is not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, the 22nd, is Ash Wednesday. We will have a service in the evening at 7 o'clock, and I uh, invite everybody to come to that. And uh, on subsequent Wednesdays during Lent, we will have a soup supper. We think we're having a soup supper. We hope and pray you can help. Uh, we will be having a worship service. Uh, also as part of that on uh, Wednesday evening Lenten midweek gathering. I'll let you read the rest of the announcements yourself. And at this time, I'd like to invite Tom McClory to come forward as an adult leader of, the, of our scouts and uh, to share a little bit of information and uh, some words. Good morning. Uh, as, as the pastor introduced me, I'm Tom McClory. I'm the committee chair for Troops 320, 5320, that as a congregation you so graciously allow us to meet here on Monday nights. You provide us with an excellent, outstanding storage facility for our equipment. You bless us with the ability to store our trailer on your site. I, I can't tell you how much we appreciate that. I uh, take a moment to introduce Jeremy Cooperman who is the Scoutmaster of our boys' troop, Scout 320, and uh, Charlotte Webker, who is the Scoutmaster for the girls' troop, 5320. Um, before I forget, the congregation is invited to a coffee and pastry service in the Blue Room immediately after the service. Please uh, come, accept our appreciation, give us a chance to meet you, and say thank you in person. Um, we are a growing troop, which is, quite frankly, as you might know in our society, a lot of traditional organizations are not growing. Um, we've been very blessed with strong leadership, a very strong program. We have a contingent, for example, this year that is going to Philmont National Camp Area, which is an outdoor backcountry wilderness experience. They are uh, training as we speak. It's uh, actually a pretty substantial challenge. Um, along with that, we have uh, another contingent for our high adventure. This summer is a, a group out to um, uh, Shenandoah National Park. So that's for the somewhat younger uh, scouts. Uh, that one I'm planning on going on because uh, I've been to Philmont and it was an absolutely wonderful experience. 
But at 60 some years old, my goodness, that's a, that's a hill to, I mean, a literal hill to climb. Uh, so these guys are, they, they have an experience in front of them. And, and this is the kind of thing that we offer in scouting. Um, but that's the bait, right? That's what we use to get their attention. Why do we do this? It's to build that leadership for the next generation. We talked a little bit about some of our um, standards, some of our principles. Uh, the pastor talked about this 12 points of the scout law, including trustworthy, loyal, scout is reverent. These are all things that are important in our society, but don't necessarily get trained well. Uh, we not only emphasize it, we give them an outdoor leadership experience where they have to take that leadership role and learn it firsthand. And then begin to understand why these soft skills, these kind of vague concepts become important. And ultimately, I will also say that as a, as a, a, um, a manager of people, I've been blessed with the ability to hire Eagle Scouts, and every one of them have turned into leaders on my team. This program works. That's why I stay involved. And that's why I hope those of you with uh, children or grandchildren that may be looking for an opportunity would consider scouting because it's a great program. And for that, I very much appreciate your support and I very much appreciate the congregation for allowing us to provide that uh, to our youth. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And I'd like to invite all the scouts to stand and turn around so that we can all see you. You all are going to have the chance to meet them when you come over to the Blue Room after worship for the reception, but this is a chance for you to see them now. Let us continue our worship now and listen to the Word of God. Moses said to the people, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, life and death. If you, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances. Then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you, have, that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not hear but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess this. I call, heaven, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you in the length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. Hope you can hear me. Yes? In the back? Okay. All right. Let's now join our voices singing in the psalm in unison, found on page four of your worshipful.
Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos answered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together, who are God's field, God's building, the Lord, the word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So, when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you, that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than for, you to, for, than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord.
But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Boy, are you going to be glad you came to church this morning. Jesus, he touches on all the juicy bits. Uh, anger and lust, adultery, uh, divorce, murder. Sounds like a recipe for any hit television show. Or it could be just us getting ready for Valentine's Day. Isn't that perfect? Yeah, all these really great things. You're going to be glad that you came to church today. So let's jump in to all these juicy things that Jesus is talking about today. What we hear today is a portion of what's been called the Sermon on the Mount. Um, it lasts for three chapters in Matthew. Chapters 5, 6, and 7. We've heard from them in the Gospel readings the last two Sundays. And we continue today. We are pretty sure that Jesus... Uh, never actually preached all of this at one time. That actually this is, this is Matthew collecting uh, various teachings and, and, and things that he said all together into one place. Because if this was all in one sermon, people's heads would have exploded. I mean, all this stuff right here, even just these 16 verses I read, uh, I don't know, did, we might have lost a few heads here this morning. Is your head on? Is it on connected still? Because here we go. We're going to jump in to what has been known as the antitheses of Jesus. Two weeks ago we heard the Beatitudes of Jesus. These are antitheses of Jesus. And so we're going to go just through four of these, of these antitheses, these couplets. First one. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be liable for judgment. But I say to you, says Jesus, I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. If you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. If you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. These antitheses are... are uh, uh, Jesus starts by saying, you have heard that it was said. And he, sa and he talks about the, these are laws, these are commandments that are in the Hebrew Bible. Uh, the Ten Commandments and all the other many, many commandments that are in, the, uh, in, in those first books of the Bible, the Torah. And here he's saying, well, you know the commandment, you shall not murder. That's a relatively easy law to follow, isn't it? Dar, have you ever committed murder? Pat yourself on the back. That's what Jesus is saying here. Pat yourself on the back for, for not murdering anyone. Because he says, he says, it's not enough just to refrain from murder. We should also treat each other with respect. And that means not insulting another person. Not speaking hurtful words to another person. He's taking this commandment, don't do not murder, and he's going further and deeper to how we treat our fellow human beings. 
Then Jesus, okay, let's continue. The second couplet. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now, adultery is a, is a really difficult thing to talk about here because we're only talking about men. Uh, it's really, you know, it's patriarchal society. It's hard to really compare to today. But he's saying that it's not enough just to refrain from committing adultery, from, from um, uh, sleeping with another person's spouse. It's not enough. You should also not objectify other people by seeing them as a means to satisfy your own desires. It's about respect and objectifying, not objectifying others and using them. Third one. Having fun yet? Aren't you glad you came to church today? It gets even better. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. That's what we, the law we all know. But he says, I say to you, that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Now, this is really hard for us to, to, to unpack because I know so, some of us here I know are, have been divorced. And uh, divorce back then is not what divorce is today. Um, and only men could divorce women in that society uh, for all kinds of reasons, even... Uh, a man could divorce his wife if she burns the bread. She burns the toast. That's how, how, how ridiculous those, those laws were. So what it is, what it means here is that don't just follow the letter of the law regarding divorce. We should also not treat people as disposable. We should make sure that the most vulnerable in our society, and in those days, it was uh, among the most vulnerable were widowed or divorced women and their children who had no other means to provide for themselves. And they were among the most impoverished and vulnerable. So last one, one more. We're not going through all of them. One more, because I think you'd only handle so much fun in one sitting, right? Again, you have heard that it was said of those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven or by the earth or by Jerusalem. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word, let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. See, it's not enough, says Jesus, to, um, to refrain from committing, to swearing falsely and lying to others. Swearing here, by the way, has nothing to do with using cuss words. Swearing is about saying something like, I swear I'm telling the truth. I swear I'm mother's grave. I swear, cross my heart and hope to die. What we should do, says Jesus, is always act honestly and speak truthfully. Because, because we should be able to live with each other where we don't have to swear. Because we're always being truthful. And we're never lying to people, being dishonest to other people. So we don't need to say, I swear on my mother's grave. Jesus says he's taking all this, he's taking all these things, and he's extending them. He's making them broader and deeper. Because he sees, he sees that human beings, human beings um, may be remembering him, but they're forgetting God's ways. There's a, uh, the British writer Peter Rollins wrote a book uh, full of parables that he's written for us modern people. And in one of his parables, uh, he talks about how God is so disappointed in the way humans are treating each other that God, in tears, turns to the heavenly hosts and says, Oh, how my people remember me, but forget my ways. How I wish they would forget about me, 
and keep my ways. It's more important, says God, to keep my ways than remembering me. Keep my ways and you will remember me. Don't just say, I believe God and I trust it in you and not keep my ways. See what he's doing here. Jesus is doing, is he's, he's going deeper. He's extending. I've been trying to think of some examples because some of these don't really work for us today. I think of examples for us today. Like uh, school zones, speed limits. You know, slow children. I always read it that way. Slow, because there are children. The, when the light is flashing, the slow children need to cross. Be careful. Watch out for them. That's an important law because it protects the, the children who are co coming, going to and from school. But Jesus would say, not only that, but you need to be concerned not just for the safety of these particular children crossing this street to go to school. You need to be concerned with the safety of all children in your community and in your city and in your state and in your country. You need to be concerned with the well-being and the educational uh, um, foundation uh, and offerings to all children. When we say there are good schools and bad schools, we want our children to go to good schools, that's unacceptable. What that means is there are bad schools. And there should never be bad schools. And that's our responsibility. That's what Jesus is doing. He's getting deeper. He's going, going to the core values, the, core, the root of what these commandments mean. Another one, we've got to pay our taxes, right? It's the law. We pay our taxes, and those taxes are for, uh, uh, so the, the governments and, our, and our, our, our local, our state, our, our national governments can, can function and provide for all people. So we pay our taxes. But that's not enough, Jesus would say. Don't just pay your taxes. But you need to be concerned for, with the common good. Not just in this, these, these taxes that you pay to the IRS. You need to be concerned and working for the common good of all, especially those who are on the margins, who don't have what we have. I was going to go one more example about people who visit national parks and behave poorly. You know those videos where people get too close to the wild animals? And, and, and Yellowstone National Park where the, the, they have the, the geysers and, the, and people actually step off the boardwalk and they, and you know how many people have died going, you know, trying to step into, uh, that's too, okay, we've gone too long. I spent too much time researching the Yellowstone dumb visitors who break the laws. So you are glad now you came to church today, right? You should be glad. Because you hear what Jesus is doing, right? He's not just giving rules and laws. What Jesus is doing here is bringing forth a new community. He's calling out a beloved community. He is, he is calling into existence a community that cares for all, whose hearts are open for all with love and grace and mercy and generosity. He's calling forth a community that doesn't just follow the laws and the rules, but who lives a radical new way of living on this earth. Jesus calls, and it's coming now. That community is coming through us. And to that, let the church say, Amen. Let us continue by singing together the hymn of the day, hymn number 806, O God, my faithful God. Please stand as you're able.
Now join our voices with the Apostles' Creed. It's found on page six of your worship folder. I believe in God, the Father. together to follow Jesus we pray for the church the world and all in need inspire your church that it may be a sign of life throughout the world from the exploration of faith with children and new believers to missionaries and bishops shaped lives of faithfulness so that all find abundant life in your ways Lord in your mercy nourish your creation accompany all who plant and water Bless the work of farmers, provide for the substance farmers facing drought and climate change. Guide the work of agricultural scientists towards sustainable ways to feed the world. Lord, in your mercy. Give growth where there seems to be no hope for life. 
in nations and regions where reconciliation seems impossible, empower peacemakers with your spirit. Where death holds sway through violence, disease, and hunger, equip relief workers to bring hope. We pray especially for the people of Turkey and Syria who grieve death and destruction following a major earthquake. And for all relief and recovery efforts, Lord, in your mercy. Nurture all in need. Bring healing to all who experience trauma caused by systems of injustice and destructive relationships. Give courage to those struggling to repent and those seeking reconciliation. Sustain all who are sick or in grief, especially Dick Tyson, Karen Lingle, Phyllis Maine, Judith Alt, Joyce Strominger, Lynn Wertman, Pat Griffey, Jesse, Simon and Sarah, Jackson, Grant, Candy and Jerry, Jean, Rachel, Dave, Sheila, Lauren, Sandy and the family of Joe, Sue and Ted, Amy, Matthew, Peggy, Jean and Bob, the Holton family, DJ and Alexander, Michael, Andrea and Rebecca, David, Gloria and Larry, Jane, the Griffey family, Steve, Joan, Lori, Dorothy, Rob, the Martinez family, and all who mourn Jackson, Oma Elvie, Ted Popoff, Carol, Blanche Swedlin, Gloria Willauer, Carolyn Hammond, Lord in your mercy. Encourage this congregation. Call us to a common purpose and keep us from quarreling. Turn our hearts toward you and guide our leaders so that our choices may be life-giving for all. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the ministries we share with the scout troops gathered here today and all who work for children and young people in our community. Lord, in your mercy. Thanks be to you for the lives of all who have died in Christ. Teach us to follow them in your ways and gather us with them into the promise of eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another.
We continue on page 7 in the worship folder with a great thanksgiving. Please stand as you're able. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together uh, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who For communion, let's start on this side of the aisle today, and then this side, you come forward, receive the bread, and then uh, take a little cup of wine and dispose of the cup uh, as you return to your seats down the side aisle. Uh, we also have gluten-free uh, bread, and we have non-alcoholic juice. So everybody is invited to Jesus' inclusive banquet of love. Please be seated.
Please stand for prayer. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending song is hymn number 544. Praise the Lord, rise up rejoicing. <laughs> Serve the Lord.